Hello, friends. Chris Corsi here, president of Thrive Today, and I want to welcome you to the Relational Skills in Real Life podcast. Friends, I'm really excited about our focus today because we're going to talk about growing and maturity. How do we grow maturity? And we have a special guest, my friend Josh Horak, who has been living and breathing and practicing maturity and relational skills for a number of years now. But before we get to Josh, I just want to talk a little bit about what we're going to hear today. Josh and his wife, Amy, are sweet friends of ours. And you know what? I've had the pleasure of just really watching God work in their lives. They just have a precious family and they've been actively growing relational skills. And Josh was a very busy leader. He, as he says, he's going to say in his uh, sharing today, he's leader of a local congregation, a local church. He's a pastor. And you know what, Josh and Amy are very busy people. And one of the things that I really appreciate about what Josh is going to share today is how he recognized the need for maturity. We've done a few podcasts already on maturity. Maturity means we can carry more weight. We become more complex that even though my, my body continues to grow, that doesn't mean I'm emotionally keeping up with my body. And so maturity is one of those skills that we can learn to identify our maturity. We can learn to identify some next steps in our maturity. And ultimately, we can learn to be the kind of people who stay relational and suffer well rather than crack and break. And so what Josh is going to share is just how maturity has changed his life. Let's hear from Josh. Hi, my name is Joshua Horak, and I'm going to share a testimony in my life of how the journey of maturity has helped me protect what matters most. Um, to tell you a little bit about myself is I live in Laramie, Wyoming. I'm married to a beautiful woman of God named Amy Horak. Uh, we have three daughters, Annika, who is 11, Adeline, who is nine, and Elise, who is six years old. I affectionately call uh, my wife and my daughters, my A team. I feel so honored to be married to my wife and honored to be uh, the father of these three champion girls. And and so we love life here in Laramie. We're uh, we are the pastor of a local church here in Laramie called Rock Laramie. Rock Laramie is also part of a church planning movement with Rock Tribe. And and so about six years ago, we found ourselves in the thick of a parenting season of life and ministry growth and responsibility at the time um we just had our uh third daughter and she was a preemie she was preemie she was a preemie she was born at 32 weeks very high needs baby and there was a lot going on there while that was going on with our other two daughters um we had like four to five different house churches at the time we were leading one of the house churches is about 30 People in the house church is way too big. Too, it was it was thriving, but it was growing too fast. Um, we had an every Sunday corporate gathering. I preached often at the every Sunday corporate gathering. Um, we had a house of prayer going. We just bought a fourteen thousand square foot building with a parsonage with fourteen acres. So there was tons going on, and there was a lot of vision, a lot of uh, ministry a lot of responsibility all at once. And what I found is what was working for me was no longer working and holding up the responsibility. And I found myself becoming very fearful of circumstances and situations. I found myself be becoming more irritable towards my wife or my daughters. And I couldn't hold feedback from people, honest feedback. I would get defensive and, uh, I wouldn't react on it, but I internally I'd get defensive and shut down. Um, and worst of all, it was very hard for me to be present with my children and give them the dad they deserve. And so there are all these things swirling um, uh, in my life, um, in our lives. And my wife actually was like, sweetie, we, we, we need to look at things. We're holding too much ministry um, for this our season of life, and we don't have enough um, at the time she didn't have these words maturity, but when she said that, I was like, she's right. Like we got to figure some stuff out. So we ended up taking a pretty long sabbatical and in this sabbatical, we took the deep dive on emotional health and the journey of maturity. And we let go of all ministry. We let go of all ministry, vision, all ministry, responsibility, 
um, we let it all go. And we just said, Jesus, you're our one thing and we want to grow and mature. And uh, we, we took a bunch of Thrive trainings, um, did some intensive with Chris Corsi, that changed my life, but really started learning to shalom ourselves. And we went on the journey of learning about enemy mode and learning where we go into enemy mode and how do we climb out of enemy mode and get God's sight and find Jesus. And I quickly learned that I was somebody who froze in circumstances and situation. On this sabbatical, I realized like, wow, when I was handling hard situations as a pastor or facing scary or powerful people um, where there may be a lot of vision or there might be good ministry ideas, but there's the practice, I, I actually would press freeze because I couldn't be my true self in the situation. And um, as we started kind of digging up these things and looking at the holes of the Swiss cheese, I had a, a pretty radical Emmanuel encounter. And and it, the end result of that man, Emmanuel encounter was Jesus spoke to this little boy that was me and said, son, where you see a death, I see a resurrection. And that's the man I'm calling you to be. And so it was about a 12 month process. And I can honestly tell you now, um, maturity and capacities have broadened and increased. And, and I'm finding myself now on the other side of this, where I'm able to attune to my wife, attune to my kids and hold big ministry responsibilities um, in a healthy spot where I can be with people and their true selves or bad self, but stay delighted in them and find Jesus with them. And that's the man I am today. All right, friends, I knew you would really enjoy hearing what Josh had to share. You know what? I really appreciated Josh's transparency on his own journey here. I liked what he said that what used to work no longer worked. So he wasn't able to do the things that he normally could get away with. And you know what? I really appreciate it as well. Josh's candor with the, talking about how fear was running his life. He, he mentioned how he would freeze. And so Josh was recognizing the absence of maturity in some key ways because he couldn't carry the weight and fear was running the show. And friends, when it comes to maturity, one of the ways we recognize maturity is missing because we're doing things out of fear. We're, we start doing things out of fear, fear motivations, fear decisions, and we, we fight to try to stay in our comfort zone. And you know what? Josh gave us a good example today how the absence of maturity affects our relationships. And so as a leader, I feel like um, Josh carries a lot of weight here in his testimony because he was very good at what he was doing, but the cracks were starting to show. So he and Amy took some time off. He pursued healing. He came to thrive. They came to thrive several times. They started learning relational skills. And you know what? What an example for us that as leaders... When we don't have what we need in terms of maturity and capacity, the, the cracks and the strain are going to show. They let go of all ministry and responsibility, and they just humbly fell on their faces before God. They wanted to be the people that God created them to be, fully ripe for their age and their stage. So maturity means we are, we are more relational over time. We suffer well. We don't do things out of fear. And Josh recognized that those pockets of fear were really bleeding into his family. And as a father to those precious daughters, Josh wanted to make those changes. And I really enjoyed his Emmanuel, beautiful Emmanuel moment that he shared, that Emmanuel encounter where Jesus met him in a beautiful way. Josh embraced his weaknesses as opportunities to grow and to heal. You know what? Maturity helped Josh to stay his relational self in new ways where he's now more present for his family. He loves well, and he can even carry more weight and still suffer well. So friends, I hope that this encourages you today that we all can learn from Josh, Josh's example. We can learn to recognize the ways that fear is running the show and our overwhelm. We can learn to find those areas in our character where we're crispy, we're crispy critters, and we need some healing or we need some relational skills to help us grow in new ways. We can get for we can get the help. We can ask for help in the ways that we need to get the help. We can learn relational skills like Josh did and make the changes. And you know what? What Josh is going to do here because of what he's doing and, and changing and healing and 
growing and working on his maturity is Josh is going to finish well. Rather than becoming roadkill on the side of the road, the ministry road, he's going to finish well. Amy's going to finish well. Their family's going to finish well because they are actively growing the good stuff. Friends, this is really why we do relational skill training right here. Like the examples of Josh and Amy really inspire us to, to keep going and try to get this stuff around the world to the people who need it. And God's leaders definitely need the skills. And so if you're newer to relational skills, you know what? We have foundational five habit builder courses that really help to create a foundation of capacity and maturity. And these are great resources. These are very, you know, practical resources where you can get little teachings, but you can actually get the exercises. So the goal here is to practice. And our Thrive training, we do a lot of practices around maturity and identifying maturity in us and other people and then start looking for next steps. And then my friend Marcus Warner and I wrote a book called The Four Habits of Joy-Filled People. We talk about maturity in that book as well. And later uh, this year in 2024, at the end of this year, Jim Wilder's releasing a series of books on maturity that you're not going to want to miss as well. So lots of good resources out there, friends. Make it a point to start growing some joy and increasing your peace and becoming the people who love well and who stay relational in times of pressure and strain.